Well, I moved. There's a couple of big deadheads above me getting ready to fall over and I don't feel like ending up like this tree just did. Look what these things just did to this. And that would hurt. Catch one of those in the bean, right? I probably shouldn't even be in this timber, but I'm here now, so I'm moving to a safer chunk. Tell you what, there's a tsunami coming. <laughs> this isn't much of a tree. The other one's probably better. We'll see how it goes. Quick note, uh, when's it last week? No, a couple few weeks ago, I was across the province in the middle there, and a lot of you noticed some rocks being thrown at me. I've got a million emails about it, comments in the comment section. And if you guys haven't figured it out yet, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I somewhat do care, but I don't care. I hear a lot of things, I see a lot of things that I obviously don't point out or run to the camera to share. Um, I don't have to tell you guys how often I'm out here, but I'm sure you've heard me in the past where I always say, I'm just not into these things. I'm not into them. I don't go looking for them intentionally. I share this planet with them. I share the forests and mountains with them. I make it very, very clear. I, I don't have, I don't want anything to do with them. All right. So I've heard things in the past. Okay. How about that time? Those two things are beating on the trees above me. I saw automatically look at the ground. I laughed. I think twice now, I think we've seen on, since I've been videoing here, I think maybe twice, something's happened. One time I left, another time I was really in the open on a riverbed, but uh, I'm just not into it. If they threw rocks at me, fine, I don't give a shit. Throw away. As long as I made it out of there, okay, didn't take a rock in the head. I'm not overly, overly concerned about it, okay, you guys? And furthermore, you know, even if, if it is in the video, let's say I was into it and I wanted to make something out of it, and I edited up that video to show the rocks, zoom in on them, they're coming in on slow motion. 99% of the plant's just going to say I had somebody in the bushes throwing rocks at me anyway. <laughs> right? So it's just a big waste of time. But just so you guys know, I appreciate your concern. I appreciate you noticing that. My concern level is probably at about a 3 out of 10. I've, I've been, I have been basically let known clearly that something has wanted me not to be there at a certain place. And believe me, when some, when these things, these beings don't want you around, there's no question about it. If you're getting, I've had, I've had pine cones whipped at us. I've had pine cones bouncing off the top of the vehicle. Um, I think that's just a game they're playing. You know, somebody, somebody's just playing a game. Let them play. Let them have at it. I'm not overly interested. Okay. Now, CCTV Leavenworth, Kansas again in the face. Steve, you asked me to rip away. Well, here I go. Michael again from Kansas City. I didn't realize that my story is in your back page. Page 83 and 84 of my book. My bad for me continued sending you my story. It's okay, man. No one has asked me about the farce. No one has asked me about the face since that day after the event with the being. I refuse to call them Bigfoot insulting and insulting in my opinion. Sasquatch is borderline in my opinion too. They're sure as not effing apes or monkeys. What the F? If anyone thinks that go bang on, going banging on trees and whooping in the dark, then be prepared for insanity. That night haunts me at least once a week, usually more. I didn't... God, these stupid bugs. I didn't mention in earlier emails that as soon as that being came over the perimeter fence west side, we all had radio issues with all equipment off and on. Weird. And the two MPs shooting at it. The roar of that being was one of the loudest things that I've ever heard except explosions of big bombs in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sorry this is long, but I think it's important for the puzzle. The face I saw was 
sort of human. He, the being, was a he. The face reminded me of a boxer who had fought Mike Tyson in his prime. Flat, smashed nose, like, like a boxer, cauliflower ears, like a boxer MMA fighter. The color of his skin was like leather color. His hair was light brown, with some gray on the chin, not much facial hair. The look and eyes and size of the being is what really stuck with me. All of that event stuck with me. The eye color, the eye color was a mix between golden and orange and bright neon, almost a glow. And it was pissed off. Oh my God, these bugs are... Oh. A lot of you people saying wear a face net. I don't wear face nets. I can't stand anything over my ears. I need my senses unblocked, all right? I don't wear face nets. I want my ears clear, my sight clear, especially when I'm solo in the woods, all right? My ears ring bad enough as it is, so. Anyways, get back to this. The eye color was a mix between golden and orange and bright neon almost a glow. And it was pissed. If it could have gotten us, I think I wouldn't be able to write this. It had hate in its eyes. We both could feel it. And the way it hit the door and dented it. Not even a sledgehammer could dent the damn door like that being did. Then the jump effortlessly over the 10-foot fence and 15-foot fence with both razor wire. Cleared with ease. Double fence in that location. It had to been close to 10 feet tall and at least 800 to 1,000 pounds, 21-inch footprints in the snow. Another thing I would add on, in 2002, after basic training, I was sent to Afghanistan. When we arrived there, there was a strange story going around about the Kandahar Giants. There were two that were killed. Not hairy men, just giant men, 12 to 15 feet tall. One killed 10 military, not sure of the other one. We weren't supposed to talk about it, but... Our training, the CO kept telling all of us to aim higher, which didn't make sense to any of us until we heard the story of the non-event that was a serious event. Once again, all the lies of the government see suckers. Steve, I've been shot, Purple Heart. I've been blown up twice, wounded once, and those explosions, another Purple Heart. I've watched friends be blown into a hundred pieces. Lots of bad shit, and that night in December 2012 is just as painful. That's bad. Once again, Steve looked me up here over in Kansas City. Equals lots of beer, white-tailed deer, big ones, turkeys galore. I have more to share, but this email is long enough for, me, for now. Steve keep, your Steve, keep your head on a swivel and always watch your six. Thanks again for everything you do. You have big brass balls, brother. God bless you and yours, Michael. I've got bright, big brass balls. Dude, you've been shot and blown up and went to Afghanistan. <laughs> Me in the forest and Sasquatch and grizzly bears. I don't know if that compares to that, brother. But, yeah, you know what? Kansas. I've been to Kansas a few times. We went in that uh, Lacine, Kansas. We used to go in the, the uh, what's it called? The National World Turkey Competition. World Turkey Hunt Competition. National Wild Turkey Hunt Competition. Whatever it used to be called. Until this COVID bullshit shut it down. But, uh yeah, if I'm over, if I'm over there, I'm coming right to you, man. No question about that one. And if if I'm not there first, if I'm not there before uh, the man cave gets set up, maybe we can have you on for a live conversation in the man cave, huh? That might be good. If you could do a little more digging, if you could possibly get us some more details on those giants at Kandahar, that sure would be helpful too, right? Obviously, there's a lot of people out there trying to brush it off as a, as just a a uh, modern day folklore story which is so easy to do but the amount of witnesses and first-hand military voices we're hearing when it comes to that story is overwhelming and it's enough for me to look and listen and go all right somebody's lying somebody's not and i'll guarantee you somebody didn't think up that story for something to do not in, not in in uh, modern times right there goes my token helicopter no rain yet Getting lucky, gonna keep going. Man, I hope these helicopters aren't thick where I'm moving to. I'm over helicopters. Sick and tired of hearing them every single time I go anywhere. And the effort that I put in to get there, it doesn't matter. There's a helicopter. And no, they're not following me. Don't even think 
think about talking about it. Um, all right, mark is red. A couple stories and some definite puzzle pieces. All right, here we go. Hi, Steve, three stories of encounters here. My dad and some friends of his had an encounter when he was a teenager in high school. This would have been in the early 60s in Grayson County, Kentucky. My dad passed away a few years ago, so this is second hand. It was getting near dark and his friends and he had pulled the car over in an isolated area to hang out. There's probably music playing and other distractions going on, so they weren't aware of the approach until they saw something upright and hairy coming at the car and didn't hang around to find out any more about it. My dad was definitely not the type of person to make things up. He was a decorated, disabled Vietnam vet, and I never even knew he had the encounter until my mother mentioned it to me. There are some more scattered accounts of encounters in the general area over the years when I searched online. In addition, a next door neighbor of my mother, who was not aware of the existence of the phenomena, as far as I'm aware, from his description and reaction to his encounter, told her that he watched white-haired, upright walking beings with no neck moving across a field nearby. He tends to walk along the road at night and go visit a friend's house and stated that he would hate to meet that big one of the group he saw. He was so affected by the sighting they had started searching for where they might be living and thought they might have found it in some caves nearby. The story was third hand from what he told mom and she told me. The last one is first hand although I'm not certain what was encountered. I was in high school. It would have been from 84 to 85. I was over at friend's house in Caneyville, Kentucky, which is also in Grayson County. His parents had taken off for a short trip to pick up some things and we were by ourselves. The house was within a couple of miles of the interstate highway and was up a hill and fairly isolated from neighbors' houses. The property is not wooded. There were maybe two or three 20 to 30 foot trees in the backyard. It's not a lot of ground cover. With a couple of small outbuildings. We had been distracted playing video games, most likely as it was getting darker, and we had not turned any lights as it didn't interfere with playing the games. Something out of the backyard caught our attention. It was getting almost dark, not light enough to see details, but easy enough to see generally. I saw something light-colored. I thought it was someone in a white uniform, but it may have been just how my mind interpreted it with the lack of any other details. The problem was the size of the person in the uniform, if that's what it was. I have an uncle who's 6'4", so I was used to that height as a reference, and whoever, whatever this was, it was many inches taller, likely over seven. My first thought was that someone from an institution had maybe escaped because of what I thought was the white uniform. But there were no institutions close by that I knew of, and there shouldn't have been anyone passing from a neighbor's yard through the backyard because we were on a hill far away from the neighbors. We were both rather alarmed to see such a large man walking toward the house from the back, there's nothing but undeveloped land behind the house. I believe the interstate was over the top of the hill, not far away. We had both moved back away from the window, out of sight, as soon as we noticed whatever it was. The size was that imposing. I don't remember it being super broad shoulder or massively built, but just a normally proportioned person over seven feet tall is pretty surprising to see when you don't expect anyone to be in the backyard or, nor or nearby at all, and we couldn't see that well what who exactly it was what or who exactly it was we moved quickly into a front room of the house and kind of sat down against the interior wall of the view of the back windows because we weren't sure what the intention was or what might happen i had not seen it long enough to notice the head more than a glimpse i believe the black doorknob might have been turned but i'm not sure because i think music might have been playing and covered the noise it was not too many minutes longer before we saw the headlights of my friend's parents turning in driving up the back. We mentioned it to them, but downplayed the extreme size, only telling, it, telling them it was someone tall. I often wondered just what the story was with who or whatever was walking through the backyard. Here's a very interesting sight of someone who has done some real research into people disappearing around the specific areas, and he has been able to tie some of them to the types of what he thinks are remains of artificial geopolymer rock-like formations built by ancient societies. Geopolymer being ground up rocks mixed with binding material and specific minerals and other materials to enhance the electromagnetic fields that they react to or generate. Wow. All right, and what's this thing called? 
humanresonance.org, Dragon's Lair PDF, human, human-resonance.org, Hopi Complex. All right, well, there's the, the link. I read it out. Uh, okay, you leave to... All right, warning. There are disturbing images of human mutilation from abduction cases. The images are only at the beginning. I'll conclude this link because the photos are artificial rock formations and detailed topographical maps pertaining to artificial semi-hidden structures are definitely of interest and necessary to understand. There's also an excerpt from one of the Carlos... Cons- Cos- There's also an excerpt from one of the Carlos... Castaneda books about how to protect yourself from what is causing the cases that may be important here's the main site of many many articles of his research which covers a wide range of related subjects www.human-resonance.org that's r-e-s-o-n-a-n-c-e dot org slash biblio dot html oh and of course it starts with http dot dot slash slash okay <laughs> i hope that helps you guys this could be a big puzzle piece considering the strange effects noted often in savvy encounters like disappearances into nothing weird disorientation mental messaging light effects which the artificial geopolymer rock material can cause combined with moving water um, it might also be possible that some encounters of what seem to be sabe is something else posing or disguising as a sabe which is maybe even more strange. I include the links to his site because I think there's probably a direct link and understanding what is going on is probably going to have to include a wide net to pick up all the puzzle pieces. It also make you more aware of the artificial rock types in areas who you are more likely to need to pay closer attention to keep a missing 401 type of event from happening to you. Unless you're familiar with your own inner warning system, it can be difficult to tell if it's an internal warning when coming into a dangerous situation or something outside of yourself warning you. The recent email you read about the guy being pulled by his hair to a tree and passing into it also shows that something far wider in scope that we may not be taking into account is going on. Not just an unacknowledged human relative living free in the wild. I think there are many different species of upright hominids scooting around out there and the crazy way they can perform physical feats like jumping over a security fence that is as tall as they are and footprint traits that disappear for no reason may point to their being able to reduce their mass or the effect of gravity on them. Maybe why they can move so fast or in the case of disappearing footprint trails using portals to move between spaces. And maybe a clue to something else disguising itself as a sabe. Also, maybe related to how they can move with no sound, if they wish, in terrain where they shouldn't be able to. It seems obvious to me from the emails that they personally make noise when they want people to know they are there, to either drive them away or goof with them for fun, I guess. As to the people getting into a huff about rocks being thrown near them, it might be informative to realize that when they hit people with rocks, it is very small rocks, and the larger locks, rocks are for getting people's attention or getting them to leave without injuring them. Same with displays of roaring and screaming. It's very obvious they could take someone out without the person even realizing what happened. Maybe even kill them sonically with the level of noise they can make. Scott Carpenter had a fairly recent video where he showed what a couple of portals formed of a tunnel through the tree branches and bushes look like. It would probably be wise to be on the lookout for those type of formations. As I believe you had a pretty recent email from someone who almost lost consciousness when they decided to walk into one after being warned about it. Forewarned is forearmed, and all that. Best of luck, Steve. Might want to take note of the clues to look out for in those links as you are moving through the wilderness. I think some of the puzzle pieces have been in sight all along, but we didn't know what we were looking at from the evidence of those geopolymer rocks. A lot of nearby rocks being a factor in some of David Pilatus' cases, and moving water combined with those geopolymers can create electromagnetic fields and effects. Once you study the photos of artificial rocks, it's easier to spot them. Natural rocks tend to have different colored layers as different combinations of silt slash mud slash etc. settle and form rock. But the geopolymers are consistent in texture and color as they are mixed and poured at one time like concrete. Jason. Whew, Jason. 
thanks for that. Thanks for that email, man. And thanks for doing all that digging. You're obviously becoming uh, very enlightened to a lot of shit that's going on our planet, right? And there's many people out there just like you doing the same thing. I have a feeling the majority of the very intelligent people in our communities are possibly sitting in the background, silent, quiet, taking it all in, learning and learning and learning and keeping to themselves. In the long run, it's probably a smarter way to do it, considering we know what's going on these days of people being eliminated, silenced, blocked, deleted, shut down, and going missing, right? There's a lot of good people that have the best intentions for society are being, uh, are being deleted. It's kind of upsetting, isn't it? But anyway, keep digging. You come up with anything else more solid. Hey, but anyway, thanks for that email again, man, and keep digging and keep sharing with us. All right, when you can, share anything you think that can help the people share it. Resending a better written version of the information I have. Right on. Thank you so much. I love reading that. Let's see what you got. No paragraphs. <laughs> you forgot the paragraphs. But thank you very much for doing the best you can. Let me get comfortable because my sleep. He must be just skimming me, man. It's handy. All right, here we go. You ready? All right, here we go. Stupid bugs. Morning, Steve. I tried to send this once already, but it might have gotten lost in the pile. Hoping this gets too easier. We don't often tell people what we know about these people or share our stories. Many members of the tribe don't or even won't tell the tribal members what happened if they end up running into a Sasquatch. Sometimes they can put some bad shit on you. And I mean bad, but enough said. Where do I begin? It's kind of difficult to know where to start when someone ain't tossing you questions. I'll just start with what I've been told by my grandmother, great aunt, and many others. My people have been practicing this religion, or more like a secret society, since not everyone wants to do these things, for as long as we can remember, but over time has been lost and mixed in with the religion that came with the white man. But enough about that. A wise man once said, it is what it is. <laughs> so back before the white man came to our area, my tribe had shared a village with some of the Sasquatch people. Some of the more powerful tribal members would actually practice this religion with them. Yeah, they would actually go out in the woods with them and do what they do. I know all this is going to sound like bullshit, but this is a few examples I've been told. And some of this stuff actually happened in the last 65 years. Examples are from the men sitting in the sweat lodge, singing and dancing for five days straight, not coming out to eat or drink. They would contest. They would have a contest on who could stay in the sweat lodge the longest. Most people would die in a few hours. Men sticking multiple animal bones through their arms and grabbing some ashes and rubbing it on their skin to make the wound disappear. They also had contests on who could do the most mind-blowing things. Also, they had access to what they called the land of the dead, where they would often go to a... with the people from there for a good salmon run that year, for example. Okay, now what does this have to do with Sasquatch? From what we understand, this practice is what gives them the power to do what they do and they are the keepers of this power. There are very few people today who still mess with it. Some use it for good and some for bad. What my auntie tells me is that no matter what it is used for, the person has to pay a price for it, which is usually a terrible price. Okay, I think I got the idea across. Now a story about what happened with my grandmother in 2017. She's just having a normal grandma day, reading the Bible, cleaning, etc. But then she noticed something was saying her name but could not tell what it was saying or why. She ignored the voice throughout the day and tried to ask it to stop. By the time 2 a.m. came around, the voice was not letting her sleep and got louder and more clear. She said, at first it was not speaking English. So by that time, the voice was begging for help and asked her to come and help it. Help it. it gave no specific location for my grandmother, just followed what it was sending out. 
So about 2.20 a.m., my grandmother grabbed her bag, headed out the door, and the voice led her to a logging road about three and a half miles away from my house, and another two miles down the logging road, which came to a dead end at the ocean. She told me that she could hear the voice getting louder, and the closer she got to the end, she pulled up with the high beams on, but did not see anything, so she slowly started making the turn around at the end of the road, where her van was facing the direction she came from, she could see something on the ground, and she said it wasn't there when she drove in. She said it looked like a big bear on all fours at first. When she stopped the van, she was able to look at it. She could see that it was a Sasquatch, and something had it trapped. She explained it exactly like this, word for word. It was on all fours, and it looked like it was trying to crawl under something, but it could not get out. So at 2.45 a.m., my grandmother is out in a dead-end logging road with a Sasquatch on the ground right at her feet. I can't go into detail about what went on the 25 minutes she was there trying to help the mail out. It's not because I'm trying to keep a secret from anyone. It's because I honestly do not want to know. She just told me that she had to pray and do her thing to get her free from whatever had it trapped. I asked her what the heck could trap a Sasquatch in an invisible cage, and her answer was... You don't want to know, kid. So I left it at that, and she did not tell me the story until a year and a half later. When it was all said and done, she told me she was gathering all of her stuff intentionally, not looking it in the eyes. That's when they can get a hold of you and make you lose hours of time and do probably whatever they feel. She said that she could hear it get up from the ground, take huge breaths of air, not from being exhausted, but just from its size alone, and it started walking towards the brush, and it stopped, and my grandma was doing everything she could not to look at it. But when she stopped, but when he stopped, he made my grandma look at him, not physically. He didn't have to touch her face to make her look at him. She said he had a very beautiful, she said he had very beautiful green eyes, and he wasn't as big as the, another one that travels through the same area. But as my grandmother looked at him, she said, he said to her, through thought, Thank you, Carol. It's a made-up name. <clears throat> then turned to walk into the brush and was gone and she said it didn't actually walk into the brush but it faded into them my grandmother is a very spiritual person and prays to Jesus every day I knew she was a powerful person but has no idea how powerful so that is one of the countless encounters with these people that my friends and family have had they are usually not too bad but some are not good at all I left some details about the Sasquatch out to make it shorter I know this is super long and probably too long to read on the channel. If so, oh well, the knowledge has gotten to you, and that was my ultimate goal. Share if you wish, and that's just a fraction of the stories I got, but by far the most outrageous one. Thanks again for all you do, Steve, and believe me when I tell you, my friend, this has been passed down from not long ago. I believe the last time that we shared a village with them was in the mid-1800s. Then, when the white man came, they moved to the hills. I hope this makes it to you take a long time to type out took a long time to type out you're the man do not think for one second that you're not keep hip kicking ass keep kicking ass adrian i'll share more if you want uh okay you left me a note at the bottom one of the questions was if it was at the quinault casino where i was with david Pilatus. yeah it was man that's where i was i appreciate that email so much it's ridiculous and uh it's never too long right so it's funny, you know, the farther the camera is from me, the louder I talk. I don't know why I got to get used to understanding the microphone's right in front of my freaking face. And it's getting real windy. One of these little squalls is going by. It's just shaving me a wall of water. It's right there. But anyway, uh, if you can email me back with more, please do. Don't hold back. If you got it, I want to hear it. If you think it's going to help, I want to hear it. And I want to share it with everybody, okay? The more knowledge, you better. I want to hear it all. I want to hear everything you got. And it's never too long, all right? So next time you get a chance, sit down and let her rip. And get it to me as fast as you can. I'm just getting licked from this water. The phone's not too wet. I'm going to keep going. Adrian, thanks again, man. I absolutely appreciate that. And I really, really, really want to hear more from you, all right? All right, what do we got? So close, I could touch him 
and forest people attack. Dear Steve, let me start off by saying I'm not a great writer, but I'll try. Also, very sorry for your loss, Mr. Macaroni. I feel your pain, brother. All right, Corey, thanks for that. I really appreciate it, man. A little info on me. My name is Corey Davez. Dave Z. My, pronounced Dave dash dash Z Z. So, Dave's. <laughs> sorry, man. My name is Corey Davis. I'm 20. Yes, young, but hear me out. I live in West North Carolina, near the Braveheart area. Feel free to use my name, and I don't give a shit what people think. Now to my story. Throughout the years, I've had a handful of sightings and experiences. I'm a lifetime hunter, fisherman, and just a good old country boy. Lived in the woods. I know the woods and all the animals in my woods. Yes, I've seen mountain lions. Killed a 40-pound bobcat just this past December of 2020. Pick attached at the end. Now, my first face-to-face, -face, I was 14 and was camping in my grandmother's yard in the bed of an old Ford pickup with a camper cover. About 11.30 p.m., I woke to a loud thump. Very odd. My dog was whimpering underneath the truck. I was very uneasy. I fell back to sleep around 12.30. I woke to footsteps. Something was walking around my truck. I looked and I saw the outline of this figure. A giant man is the best description. Nine feet tall, four feet wide at the shoulders. Now this was underneath a night lit, a night light. Now this is underneath a night light my grandpa had installed in the driveway. I could clearly see in the outline. I walked next to the truck and I was rubbing this. It walked next to the truck and was rubbing the side of it. It bent over to look in the window. I could hear it breathing. Steve, it got so close it fogged up the window. No smell neither. Just pure primal fear. I was just a boy at 14. After seeing me move, it took off for cover around 65 yards in about three steps. Three steps. Ugh. I got out and ran inside my grandmother's house and stayed there until my dad came to get me in the morning. That still haunts me to this day, knowing that only a thin layer of aluminum and glass windows between me and this thing. Story number two. Deer rifle season, 2016 November. My first year hunting alone. <laughs> Go figure. I was super excited being 16 years old. I had a Remington 270 and thousands of acres to myself and 20 bullets. A 16 year old boy's dream. I hear you, Matt. Oh, freaking camera got blown over. All right, let me go fix it. I, didn't even... I did not notice that, didn't even hear it. Just looked up and the camera's gone. That's really weird too because it's completely, uh, it's between a couple of big trees covered from, I don't know, whatever, it happened. <laughs> Hopefully I get back to the store here. Yes, you know what's really weird is there's not enough wind right there to knock that sucker over. The shirt that's on it isn't even moving. Weird. All right, story number two. Deer rifle season 2016 November. My first year hunting alone. All right. A 16-year-old boy's dream. You know, I was that 16-year-old boy too. And uh, I'll never forget when I was finally started hunting by myself with a rifle. I always did it with a gun or with a bow since I was like 12, but okay, get on with it. I was sitting in my stand. There's a rock cliff behind me. Around 10 that morning, I started to hear a rock banging coming from a small creek about 300 yards to my left. This made me uneasy as I remembered the night in the truck. I went on, it went on until around 11. I had ate my lunch and there was a bang and a thud at the top of the cliff behind me. I got up and looked behind the tree my stand was at. Now I hunt on the ground. But what I saw, a flash of black. 
but I saw a flash of black. I raised my hunt. I raised my rifle thinking it was a bear. Now, Steve, I grew up with guns and shoot weekly. I'm an expert shot. Well, as soon as I raised my rifle, all hell broke loose. This, this thing was now coming down that cliff, grabbing trees to slow itself down. When it hit, it was making a blind straight at me, grunting, and just noises I can't explain. Okay, I think it might have been a typo. I'm going to read that one more time. When it hit, it was making a blind straight at me. So a blind must be being a, you must have meant it was making a blind run straight at me, grunting, and just noises I can't explain. I held up and in center of his chest and let off a round from my 270 that clearly struck him, slowing him down quite a bit. But he kept coming. Holy shit. I grabbed my pack and I ran and I ran. He followed me all the way to my truck. Steve, a 270 round basically had no effect on this damn thing. It took me two years to go back there. I did pick up some features, but not many. No shit. You shot him. Clearly a male. Hair all over except the face. Solid jet black, very shiny hair. No one can convince me other. It had a face. A face of a man just bigger. It had white in its eyes, like me and you. Steve, I have no doubt in my mind this thing was out to kill me. I still hunt that same spot. Actually killed a bobcat from that stand this past year. I upgraded from a 270 to a Remington 7 mil I upgraded from a 270 to a Remington 7 mm Rem Mag, basically a 300. Even then I still felt fear there. I said out loud there, "Remember me, you son of a bitch, I shot your ass. I'm only here to hunt, leave me be because this time I have something bigger and I'll kill your ass if I see you." The fear was still there but not really as bad. I upgraded again to a 450 Bushmaster. Went back, also took my 9mm pistol and my hunting knife that has, a, that has skinned many deer. I stood my stand and clearly stated, I'm not here to hunt today, I'm here to settle our feud. And I got nothing to fear, nor dread, nor nothing. I stayed for an hour or so, and then I was leaving, I just got these words in my head. We know who you are, we know you're not bad. You was defending yourself against a bad one. But don't worry, the bad one is gone and we will not bother you. Just watch. But we don't worry. But don't worry, the bad one is gone and we will not bother you. But just watch. Wow. I have since felt totally at ease there, Steve. Only in the dark am I nervous. But humans have a fear of the dark naturally. I now take my soon-to-be wife there with me. My father showed me this spot, he still goes. He was screamed at last year. I think because I made them mad by shooting the bobcat, but he has not said anything other than that. We still have ongoing activity at our home. Nothing bad, just curious juveniles is my thought. Along, along with the mountain lion that let us clearly know he's here by screaming. Anyway, Steve, I hope someone will hear this and do what I did and reclaim their love of the outdoors as me. Steve, you're a good man. I'll always have your back and you'll always be welcome in my home. Let me know if you're ever in the Asheville area of North Carolina and I'll let you stay at my house and eat dinner for free. Cell number is. God bless you and stay safe, brother. Corey Davis. All right, Corey, thanks for that invite, man. If I'm ever around, you can be rest assured I'll show up and I'll eat some of that free food. <laughs> What a crazy frickin' story. You got a set on you, man. You got a set. Many a grown man, many a grown man has ran, ran, ran from less than what you saw and experienced. A good few for swinging up and yanking the trigger on that thing. I mean, uh, we, nobody was there. Sure, there's going to be some people out there going to be absolutely offended that you shot at one of these peaceful, sweet supreme beings. But listen, to all you people out there that are out of tune with nature, out of tune with the real world, which is all around me right now, rule number one in nature, if something is locked on you, locked on you, that's typically a threat if it's from a predator. In all this land, all these mountains, all these forests, if any animal with its eyes in the front of its face are locked on you and it's coming at you, instead of going the opposite direction, it's probably not there to hump your leg. 
or nuzzle your ear, all right? If any human being does that to any other natural predator in the woods, the human being's going to be in for it. If any human being does that to another human being, basically in any country, you're probably going to be in for it. It's just the way nature works. Whose fault is it that, that thing got a slug in its chest? It's, 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 it's the being's fault. It's the Sasquatch's fault. Trust me. If I was sitting here right, right now looking at that camera, and an eight or nine, or I don't care how big it is, is some predator, whether it be human or non-human, bear, cougar, I don't care what, I don't care what it is. If something's locked on me right now in the middle of nowhere and coming for me, this thing's going to stop it or put a hole, a big hole in it, no matter what. I mean, you're, you're a dummy not to, right? Anyway, you can't blame the guy for shooting the damn thing in the chest. Uh, that's pretty amazing. You went back there and called him out and said, let's get it on. Holy shit, dude. You got some attitude, man. Good for you. What a crazy, crazy experience. So thanks thanks again for sending that in and sharing it with the people, all right? Corey, and if you got anything else you want to share, fucking send it in, man. Type it out and send it in, all right? And once you hear me um, reading your email out loud, you make sure that you copy this email and you send it to all your friends and your community and you let them, you let them hear this shit because it's got to be spoken about openly. People got to get informed. What a crazy story, man. What, a, what an absolute intense intense experience you just freaking racked up and survived unbelievable